we can simply drag it down and predict the demand for all the following months. This is how simple exponential smoothing works. Next, we are going to introduce the most complicated scenario, double exponential smoothing. In our textbook, it's called adjusted exponential smoothing. In DES, we need two components to make a prediction. One is a base or base level, the other is trend. Based on those two elements, we can make a forecast. In our textbook, base is called forecast, and the final forecast is called adjusted forecast. I use this notation for a reason, because we are going to introduce a slightly different set of formula. This new set of formula will be a little more powerful than the one we see in the textbook. Indeed, the formula for calculating base level and trend are identical as the ones in our textbook. The real difference is in the last formula with which we make predictions. If we take a look at this formula over here, the prediction for time period t plus n is equal to the base level of time period t, which is most recent time period, plus n times trend in time period t. In DS, we need two constants, alpha and beta, Let's say alpha is 0.2 and beta is 0.1. And this method, FYI, is also called Holtz method. Now let's see how double exponential smoothing works. Very similar to simple exponential smoothing, we are going to assume that the first base level is equal to the actual demand of first time period. As a result, the trend will be equal to zero because 37 minus 37, it is zero. And next, we are going to calculate the base level for the second time period. It's equal to alpha times the actual demand of last time period plus one minus alpha times the base level of previous time period. It's not surprising at all that the second base level is also equal to the first one, because the very first base level is equal to the actual demand of the first time period. Okay, next let's calculate the trend of February. It's equal to beta times the difference of base level 2 minus base level 1 plus 1 minus beta times previous trend. Okay, let's see how we can make predictions. If you look at our formula, the demand forecast for February will be equal to the base level in January plus N, which will be equal to 1, times the trend level of January. So in Excel, it's equal to F5 plus G5. Now we created the formulas for base trend and forecast. Next, we are going to use the trick of Excel to generate base trend and forecast for all the remaining time periods. And here it is. The reason I want to introduce this slightly different version of double exponential smoothing is that with this new formula, we can make many, many more predictions. 
For example, we want to predict the sales in January of next year. It's going to be equal to pretty easy. Base level of December plus trend of December as well. What if we want to predict the demand of February of next year? It's equal to, okay, right now we're in December, so the base level of December is 48 plus 2 times the trend of December. Because February of next year is two time period into the future. That's why A is equal to 2. Return. So the prediction of demand for January of next year is going to be 50. And similarly, we can predict the demand of March of next year. It's going to be equal to the same base level plus 3 times the trend of December, and so on and so forth. Next, I'm going to use the result I generated for double exponential smoothing to introduce a few measurement of forecast accuracy. Let me hide a few columns. Because the very first forecast is not available, so we can start from time period 2. First the thing we're going to calculate is called forecast error or error. It's equal to the actual demand minus your prediction. Second is absolute deviation or absolute error. Not surprisingly, it's equal to the absolute value of forecast error. The third item over here is called absolute percentage deviation. In some of the books, it's called absolute percentage error. It's equal to the absolute deviation divided by the actual demand. So we get actually a percentage, 7.5%. Last one is called squared error. It's equal to forecast error squared. Next we generate a calculation for all the other time periods. Now with the basic information over here, we can do a few things. First of all, we would like to find out about the cumulative error. That's easy to do. It's equal to the sum of all the forecast error we calculated earlier. So the cumulative error is 71. Average error is equal to cumulative error divided by time period. Keep in mind, we do not have forecast for time period 1, so we made 11 predictions. The average error is equal to 71 divided by 11, which is 6.45. And next, we can calculate MAD, or mean absolute deviation. It's equal to the sum of all the absolute deviations divided by number of predictions we made, which is, once again, 11. Next, we can calculate MAPD or MAPE, which is mean absolute percentage error. It's equal to sum of all absolute percentage deviation divided by number of predictions 11. In the end, we calculate mean squared error. It's equal to the sum of all squared errors 
divided once again by the number of predictions. So we get MSE is equal to 57. 